Hello everyone. Um, you have made it to the last talk of the conference for the, for the day at least. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Sagar. You may or may not have seen me on the forum or on GitHub. Um, you can contact me on any of these uh, mediums, whichever you prefer. Uh, today, I want to talk about the values that make great Frappe apps great and how we practice them when building India compliance. So before I get into it, I would like to talk about how India Compliance really came into being. Um, I did my first successful ERBNX implementation back in 2017, uh, but that was after a couple of failed attempts. So what went differently this time? It was my brother Smith, who will speak in a while. Um, he uh, basically, uh, yeah, this is, this assume it's him. <laughs> so basically, uh, yeah, not only he ideated the project, and um, he also involved all the relevant stakeholders, but he also just you know refused to give up on me for days and sometimes even weeks until I delivered the code that he wanted. So you know, there's a page on uh, ERBNX documentation about the champion, and naturally, I think of Smith when I read it. Um, yeah, um, and we built some really cool stuff. So this, for example, is an example of how we compiled multiple PDF files into a single PDF file, and you know we added a beautiful header at the top of it, uh, all using ERPNext. And um, yeah, apart from that, one of the coolest things that I think we've built uh, together was bank reconciliation, which we are still using this in production today. Which basically what this does is uh, you fill your payment entry normally how you would, and on click of a button. Selenium will open up a browser because banks in India, they don't generally provide you with an API. So we created a fake browser using Selenium. Selenium will open that browser, log into your net banking, fill the form, do everything. Eventually, a screenshot of your payment will get attached to your payment entry. Yeah, so we built some cool stuff, I think. Um, but yeah, Smith finally gave up on me a year ago or something. <laughs> he decided to build what he wanted himself. Um, my unavailability or whatever the reason. And uh, based on that, so, I mean, I didn't have very high hopes for him because he's a chartered accountant by profession. Uh, but he surprised me because a few weeks later he came up to me and said, look at this, I have built a complete uh, automation where you, know, you enter the GS10 and automatically the party details will populate in the form. After that, he persisted with it, and he built the entire Evable integration in the matter of a um, few months. So I was naturally very delighted to see this, and I spoke to Sakib from Frappe about it. He uh, liked the demo that Smith presented, and uh, you know he referred us to Omer from Frappe to take it further. And yeah, imagine my surprise when Omer said that you know give me a proposal for an uh, app to hold the entire regional code of India, because we are splitting it from ERPNX. Um, so yeah, this was the proposal I made. <laughs> and uh, this brings me to the first value that I want to discuss today, and that is open source first. The only reason why a tiny company out of nowhere got the opportunity to manage the entire regional code for India is because of our contribution karma. And uh, we've been contributing consistently to ERBNX in all forms, whether it be answering questions on the forum, to making small PRs, to you know, releasing ERBNX for V11, to even recently uh, heading the security team for Frappe apps. So yeah, and um, this is all because Rushab, thanks, thanks so much Rushab for uh, you know, blessing us with innumerable opportunities. And obviously the entire Frappe team for being so awesome uh, whether we wanted like enterprise user testing recently or whether we wanted guidance, anything, Frappe team has always been there for us. And it's not just about the wholesome feeling. Uh, we have made really good money in the last year from sponsored PRs, and thanks for our clients, you know who you are, for sponsoring our PRs. And uh, apart from that, we have made money from security bounties, and we have made money, even Frappe, which thanks a lot Frappe, uh, has uh, granted us uh, for uh, some financial support for all the continuous contribution that we have done. So it is possible to make really good money even by contributing to open source. Uh, yeah, and uh, with that being said, 
I want to talk about one of the hot questions that people are asking about India compliance is why did we went with our own API solution instead of going with other API providers out there? And the reasons for this are pretty simple. It's because we prioritized user experience. And uh, basically, uh, unlike other APIs, our API allows you to access you know, all the APIs, whether it's eway bill, e-invoice, whatever the legal regulations are there in India. All of these APIs can be accessed from uh, you know, one, one API instead of you know, having to subscribe each API separately from your GST provider or whatever be that case. Apart from that, uh, we uh, you know, reduce the minimum spend to like you know, 13 USD or 1,000 rupees per annum. Uh, as compared to you know GSP's charge, you know a lot more minimum spent per annum, and that's not affordable because we want to build something for SME businesses, and um, API credits can be rolled over on top of that. Uh, so yeah, win-win. And uh, it's not just that, uh, you know, if we had built for multiple API providers, we would not have been uh, able to focus on what truly matters, which is building the cool integrations which uh, people will use and uh, you know uh, enjoy. Uh, to make compliance with uh, legal rules and regulations as simple as possible. And uh, this brings me to how our API works. We considered multiple options like Kong, Tech, but eventually we went uh, and decided to page F. <laughs> and um, so we uh, uh, cho uh, chose AWS API uh, Gateway as our preferred uh, technology for uh, hosting our API. And Basically, there are two layers to it. Uh, if you are making a request for the actual APIs, it uh, gets, uh, you know, the authorization uh, is added to it and it gets forwarded to the GST provider for which we are using, which is Adequare. And uh, if uh, that is not the case, uh, then, well, if you are uh, making an API call, say, for example, to our billing or account management portal, uh, it will, you know, just get redirected to our EC2 instance, which is a simple uh, 4GB RAM installation of uh, Frappe. And that manages the whole billing management. Um, and all of this, you, you might be wondering how much does it cost? Just 20 milliseconds extra. And 20 milliseconds is just 2% of a second. And, and so we think that uh, our API pro, uh, solution is really quick. You should go try it out. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, we are using Adequare for our uh, API so solution provider. And um, they also host an API, so the latency issue is also not there. Um, for account management, we decided to do something radical. We decided to implement account management within the app itself. So once you, you know, go to the India Compliance account page, you just need to enter your email or GSN uh, if you are signing up. And then once you verify your email address, uh, you can automatically um, get started and, you know, you can just configure your GST settings to start using the API. Now, why we did this, there are multiple reasons. It's because we value your privacy and security. Uh, by asking as minimum information as possible, we are saving your time. Apart from that, uh, you know, by not asking for passwords, we, we don't have to you know, store your passwords. We don't have to care about them getting compromised. We just went with email authentication, because why not? And um, yeah, apart from that, we uh, don't log your actual API requests. Only access logging is done. Uh, and your data is just used for billing purposes. It's never shared with third parties unless we are legally required to do so, then that's a different story. Um, yeah. Um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. We are also trying to automate as much as possible. So in this instance, for example, you just submit your uh, invoice. Um, I'll just do it again. <laughs> And uh, yeah, once you submit your invoice, the eWay bill is getting automatically generated and the PDF of that eWay bill, similar to how it looks like in the government portal, gets attached uh, to your invoice. And so one of these uh, values is to save your time, we are trying to automate as much as possible. And uh, it's all about you know, forming a flowchart of how you can automate this and then just getting it implemented. Um, so yeah, we did that. And um, yeah, uh, we've done a lot more in terms of user experience, security, privacy, and a whole lot of other values which are very close to our heart. And watch out for some blog posts to learn more about that. Um, and I will uh, ask Smit to continue from here. Thanks, Smit.
I'm sorry for that. So thank you, Sagar, so much. Now I'll come to a time where Sagar is mentoring me. Okay. So this is when I started integrating the Evable APIs, and Sagar is like Smith. You are not building for our family business, Smith. You are building for everyone out there. Okay. So what does building for everyone really mean? So building for everyone is about having a bigger picture in mind. It's about making things future proof, right? So with every feature that we made, we made sure that uh, we were consulting domain experts out there. We consulted a community of chartered accountants to make sure what problems they face and we don't face that problem. We did a lot of benchmarking. We actually compared a lot of apps and uh, we made including ClearTax and Zoho and other apps and made sure that we get the right feature there. So how can one actually know everything out there? So this is the way you can. It's also about making things configurable, okay? So we have a big settings page out there for making it conf configurable for you. One important thing that Sagar really cares about a lot and I learned from him is little things matter. So with great UX, you need to start with caring for very small, small things there. This is a simple eVable generate dialog where you generate eVable manually if required. It starts with having validations both in the UI and in the backend. So I'll not bore you with the good stuff. I'll just come to one simple point out there that is the button that you see right here, okay? So, if you, if you think about this, the primary moment validation with us, with respect to response, and made sure that the button changes, although the event handler is seen, okay? Okay, so this is one really important thing that we did, which could be breaking for V14 as well. So when we thought about having really cool validations out there, automations out there, we thought that we did not have control over the tax accounts that exist in India. What we did was, we standardized here. We freezed the tax accounts. These are the accounts that one must maintain and no more, no less. Irrespective of multi-GSTNs, multi-tax rates, be it some any other use case that comes up in future, you maintain just these accounts. We'll see soon how this will help us a lot in ahead. So, features that are under development, I'll just come up to them. So, with very simple configuration out there, in your purchase or sales taxes and charges template, which is whether it's reverse charge or is it's interstate, you can simply, simply cut down that number of templates to just six. Four for purchases, two for sales. Okay, and what we see is a cool automation where in this particular case, if it's, it is reverse charge, it just automatically does it, everything. So be it any use case, reverse charge, exports, any use case, it gets covered. But the thing is, how are we handling the complex cities over here? Well, they are still under build up and uh, we can discuss about them in detail later on. So, this is again a new feature, the purchase reco tool that uh, Atul just mentioned about, that is also in the making right here. So, first thing that comes is really different and clean UI that's built. It comes with very smart algorithms. So, for those who don't understand what's purchase reco tool, it's simply reconciliation between your purchases with the purchases that your suppliers filed with the government. So here we are, so there can be many mismatches in the data and that needs to be reconciled as per Indian regulations. So, uh, so over here you'll see the tabbed interface, the download button, the email button where you can simply, you know, just directly download or email the cool reports to your suppliers. One very unique feature about this tool is that be it GSTR 2A, 2B, anything, 
you just reconcile once. You don't have separate reports for them. So you are not reconciling again for 2A and 2B both. This is the report, Excel report that gets exported, which you can share with your suppliers. It's comparison of 2A with purchases. You see out of the box, the differences get highlighted in red and it, it becomes really easy for your suppliers to compare them. These are some other dialogues that are built just to directly download the, rep the 2A to B directly to your system without going anywhere else. This is about, this is again the dialogue for a detailed view of comparing the purchase for 2A to B versus purchases and taking actions based on them. So it's just been one month and we are still in development though, but we, we are really uh, happy with the love that we've got. We've got more than 200 sites on Frappe Cloud, 50 plus API signups and 180 plus clones almost every week. So how are we really going ahead in the future? So with the very tight base we have right here, the validations and everything, we, we can very easily file returns directly from the ERP system to the government portal. We can have additional GST reports. We can have TDS automations and reports, the digital signature that obviously you just mentioned, and also onboarding domain experts. So I'll just stress a little on the last point where it's a win-win for everybody. So domain experts, I realized that they have really good knowledge about what are the actual requirements from government's perspective, okay? So we get a really uh, original and, uh, I mean, we get the best opinion out there, they get a best practice, they can develop around it, and the end user gets the better product. So it's a win-win for everybody. And all this can be achieved by contributions that we can have from you all in terms of maybe non-technical, technical, or maybe sponsored features or anything. In the end, I'll just like to say that whatever we build out there, it's just to make sure that we give delightful software experiences accessible to everyone out there. Thank you so much.